So first, let's ask the question, uh, what actually is 4D? Um, does the connection of 3D plus time actually result in 4D? Is that how we um, understand 4D in the industry? Um, it is in, in many eyes, um, and a lot of owners believe uh, that this 4D, uh, this great movie, um, provides us uh, enormous benefit. But most of the 4D representations uh, that we depict are really a great movie for marketing and uh, sequencing benefits. But um, actually, the, the, the granular level of detail is missing. Um, sometimes, it, it, imagine somebody in a corner sniggering as they review a 4D playback. Um, oh, uh, Dave, come and have a look at this. Uh, according to this, we're building the columns on the fourth floor before we've even created the fourth floor. Uh, tell the intern that we, we may need some skyhooks, um, and the pun goes on and on. So there are some obvious sequencing benefits that come from uh, analyzing things by connecting just the simple 3D to time and the resultant 4D. However, um, the principles of connecting BIM to a schedule, uh, we as a services team um, in Vico have been doing that for many years, and we've built supporting best practices and through understanding more about the information that we can generate from the BIM, we believe that there's a better way of doing it. So there's more to 4D than just adding a time component to the 3D object. So it can be used for presenting marketing material, and we do get the sequencing benefits. But um, if we add granular detail to that, we can ensure that we get better benefits uh, coming out at the end. I mentioned our friend Vito, Abraham, Abraham Lincoln, he, he once said, it was repeated actually by Warren Buffett, um, asked the question, how many legs does a dog have if you call its tail a leg, a leg as well? Um, so you count four plus the tail, most people would answer five, but the true answer is still four. Just because you call its tail a, a leg, it doesn't actually mean that it is. So same principle I'm suggesting applies here is that just because we call something 4D doesn't actually mean that it is. So the simple glueware method of producing 4D um, really re results in this pretty movie uh, based on thousands of um, undocumented assumptions and doesn't really help us build the project. So let's have a look at what does actually constitute 4D, um, true 4D as we are coining in this presentation. When the, the building information model is linked to the schedule, through a database of cost and time, you can actually use it to automate the creation of parts of the schedule for you, uh, saving you time and produce, producing a much more accurate and flexible result. So instead of spending all of your time doing the data crunching, um, let the, the eye in BIM, the information do the hard work for you. So we can drive quantities to generate tasks within the locations in which the quantities exist. And the combination of this amount of work and the desired duration will actually dictate the level of resource required to complete the task. Um, so owners should actually be requiring that 4D task durations are actually justified with quantities and productivity rates. And it's not a simple means of linking the 3D to the time component. Um, we're actually leveraging the integration of the building information model as we progress. So these are two of the differentiating, differentiating factors as we, we leverage the iron BIM for, for more optimum results. Generally, in a presentation, I don't like to, to show 4D simulations because it's only part of the, the deliverable. It's a, a small uh, part of the benefit from connecting BIM to the schedule. Um, I wasn't actually going to include any in this presentation, uh, but I thought you know, it's kind of sexy as a byproduct. Um, so here are a few examples. But as we can see, um, it's very difficult to, just by looking at these movies, um, see whether they're based on real quantities um, and locations and real resource productivities from the building information model and the database. So let those play in the background. But um, we've all seen these 4D representations, but do they actually represent the optimum schedule, the most optimum? Um, end result on the duration of the project. Well, the true 4D, 
as we've seen, when we connect the BIM, uh, we require this information transfer. So going from the components, the elements in the building information model, the quantities and the locations, along with an understanding of the resources required for, um, for, the, for the methods that we're using to create the building elements, is driven into a location-based schedule. And this transfer of quantities uh, results in a more granular level of detail um, in order for us to start to optimize the project um, in a planning sense and then control it on site. So let's see how this additional data going from the Gantt chart on the right-hand side to down to the flow line underneath, how this additional data has altered our understanding of the plan. In this slide, we can see a review of the Gantt chart. So the example at the top, as we saw before, it shows how we are forced to make a, a time-based uh, assumption for the connection between the tasks. We need to understand that um, between task A and task B, or uh, the green task and red task, at some point we need to define when the red task is going to commence. And that's done by a, a guesstimate. Um, we effectively make an assumption of how much of the area we can complete in a certain period of time and then uh, put a lag on a task. Big guesstimates usually end us in hot water when we actually get through to the site um, and it unfolds um, and the firefighting that generally evolves on site. is somewhat to do with this um, traditional way of, pace, uh, of sending a task to be as soon as possible on a Gantt chart and maybe we shouldn't actually start it at that point in time. So. The flow line, the figure below the Gantt chart, we can see, uh, well, ho hopefully you'll have watched uh, BIM 101, the webinar. Um, if not, you can watch it in the archives after this. But um, we can see how the, the, the lines are represented first as um, just a straight line through which the locations they work. And this is a direct representation of the Gantt chart. And in this example, we're showing that the assumption of uh, progress throughout the Gantt chart bars will actually be linear. However, we are all aware that construction is very varied and this is rarely the, the, the case on site. So we know that each task will take a different amount of time depending on the amount of work that's there and the level of resource that we plan to use. So the truth is that the factors um, vary from location to location, so we'll end up with um, actually a varying um, pitch of this, the slope of the line will differ depending on the amount of work and the amount of resources that we're adding to these tasks. So when we add quantities by their location in this flow line, we can identify that progress is not actually linear and it doesn't take the same amount of time in each location. So task one, the green task, starts at a lower slope, but um, perhaps you know, that's due to there being less work in that location and it increases towards the end. So we, we start here with a lower slope and we increase towards the end. So it's not actually that we're flowing through locations in a linear fashion. The red line is shown as being starting as a steeper slope. Perhaps uh, we can utilize more resource in these first two locations, so in locations A and B. Perhaps we can utilize more resource. It's a larger area. Maybe they're more productive. Maybe this is tiling and uh, they can go at a, lower, a larger area rather than being very intricate in uh, location C, which is the small areas in the, um, in the, um, around the vanities. This results, as we can see, in a clash, um, not similar to the 3D clash detection that we run through our building information models. So this is actually showing us where trades might clash on site. So these red dots indicate where we could have problems with these trades clashing on the Gantt chart, on the um, site. Um, and this is only seen by us including this more location-based and granular level of quantity-driven data um, and basing it on real resources and real productivity rates that is, as I hasten to add, extracted automatically from the building information models. 